Tuesday, November the 19th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Please silence your cell phones and any other electronic devices. Please stand for the prayer by, council, um, by our planning director, Mr. Scott Ankerson, and the pledge by Councilman George. Dear Heavenly Father, God, before you tonight, we give you honor and we give you praise. And Lord, as the Christmas season is upon us, Lord, we're reminded of that wonderful gift you've given us, Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, who took on the sins of this world, died on the cross, Father, for our sins, Lord. And we thank you for that, God. We ask tonight for unity in this room, Lord, with our city council, our staff, Lord. We ask for peace and grace for our citizens, Lord, through this season and throughout the next year. We pray all of this in your Son, Jesus Christ, holy name. Amen. Amen. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman George, and thank you, Mr. Ankerson. <coughs> That brings us to our agenda order of approval. Ms. Shancy, do we have any changes? No changes. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda order? So moved. Motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman George. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Galat? Aye. Motion carries. That brings us to our announcements by our, our city manager, Ms. Paula Yancey. City offices will be closed Monday, December 25th, and Tuesday, December 26th, in observance of the Christmas holiday. The city offices will also be closed Monday, January 1st, in observance of the New Year holiday. Thank you, Ms. Yancey. That brings us to our presentation agenda, and tonight we have two. Our first is the certificate recognizing the coaches and players of the Gocha Youth Football Team Super Bowl champions. Um, first, um, I would like to ask the team coach um, Lee Booth and Eric Miner if you and your team um, can come to the front um, so we can recognize you. This is the certificate of recognition, whereas the city of Goche's youth football Super Bowl was held November the 18th, 2023, whereas the head coach of the Goche Saints is Lee Booth and Eric Miner as the assistant coach. And whereas the players were Trey Baldwin, Alonzo Bryant, Camarion Holmes, Kyrie Hurst, Jernell Matthews Jr., Mason Miner, Chancellor North, and Amara, Amari Paisley? Paisley. 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 Whereas the Goche Saints won the 7-8 football Super Bowl <laughs> championship and now, therefore, we, Casey Bond Mayor, and the council members of the city of Goche, Mississippi, do hereby recognize the Goche Saints as the 7-8 football Super Bowl champions. And testimony whereof, I appear to affix the sale of the city of Goche this, the 19th day of December, 2023, Mayor Casey Bond. Thank you. Congratulations. And the council, are we all standing in the middle? Okay. You know, I just want to say thank you to the coaches for volunteering because it's hard recruiting us and thank Chastity and her staff. Um, for all their hard work. The recruit volunteers here for our youth seems to be a challenge. So I encourage all of you or your church or your business, if you wanna volunteer, we have volunteer positions available and our youth really um, need great mentors. So they're looking, but these gentlemen stepped up to the plate, took time out of their busy schedules to help these youth and to watch them play. Every year the Super Bowl rotates in the city 
This year, the city of Ocean Springs was the host city for the big event, and to watch them play their hearts out and win was just a great day in Ocean Springs supporting the Gators. So I look forward to watching y'all next year, and the council, we appreciate all y'all's hard work. Congratulations. <laughs> Church Joshua Reese, Maurice Lowry, and Urban Galad, and your um, 9 10 football team. Good. City of Goche Certificate of Recognition, whereas the City of Goche Youth Football Super Bowl was held November the 18th, 2023, and whereas the head coach of the Goche Gators, Joshua Reese, with Maurice Lowry and Irving Glaude as the assistant coaches, and whereas the players were Carter Adams, John Kubion, Kub Jackson Cross, Kadarian Davis, Darian Davis, Jaden Dorsey, Timothy Fairley, Eden Glaud, Zamarian Graffrey, Kyler Hayes, Jason Jules Hill, Maurice Lowry Jr., Aubrey McClendon Jr., Braylon Newberry, Christopher Pipkins, Caden Reese, Ramon Wallace, Jamison Washington, Jackson <coughs> Williams, Kevin Williams, Emery Worsham, Kerry Young Jr., and Whereas the Goche Gators won the 9-10 Football Super Bowl Championship, and now therefore, we, Casey Vaughn, and the council members of the city of Goche, Mississippi, do hereby recognize the Goche Gators as the 9-10 Super Bowl Championships. And testimony whereof I have been here into a fixed facility of the city of Goche, the 19th day of December 2023, Mayor Casey Vaughn. Good job, boys, and y'all continue to have a good holiday and enjoy and thank y'all for representing. To watch this team that day in Ocean Springs, um, it was a little more intense, um, but we had a victory, and you would have thought you were at a um, professional pro football game watching these young youth. And I have to say, kudos to all the parents. Um, there was some concern before the ball game started about behavior with adults. I said, I don't think we're going to have any problem. And kudos to the parents for not using foul language, not addressing <laughs> each other. And I just want to say thank you for allowing your children to play here in Goche, and we look forward um, to next year. And I encourage you once again, on behalf of Chastity and her staff that does a fine job, please help recruit volunteerism. If we want to have recreation for our youth and keep them out of trouble, we have to have volunteers. We have to have um, people invest in our youth or else we won't be able to have recreation. They're our future leaders and Mayor Vaughn and the council, we support y'all 100%. We're only a phone call or a message away from your parents or you if you need us. That brings us to presentation agenda item number two recognizing the retirement of Deborah Holmes, utility billing clerk. Come on, Ms. Debbie. And she's been bribed and bribed and bribed to not leave. But at some point, you gotta go live life to the fullest after you've done a long, um, career like she's been dedicated to get you. And I think most of the people in this room probably know Debbie or have talked to Debbie on the phone over her 37 years. Hold on one second, Ramona. Let's let them get out. If you, we're going to hold on one second while our youth leave so they don't distract um, Debbie's <laughs> recognition on her special day.
So in honor of Deb's 37 years here with the city, we have a little plaque that we have made for her, and I'm just going to read what we have on it. Thank you for your exceptional work and dedication throughout your 37 years of service. You have made a difference in the lives of so many. Debbie Holmes, you, as you move into the next amazing chapter of your life, know that you will be missed, know that you, that our very best wishes and thoughts go with you, and know that we will never forget your professional expertise, mentorship, and your friendship. Our best wishes go with you. <laughs> Um, I'll ask that Ms. Yancey and Ramona and any of the utility department or city staff that want to get in our photo um, with Debbie, if y'all please come forward so we can get a photo um, recognizing her. Ms. Bain, you started out working with Debbie many years ago. Come on. Come on, Babs. Don't make me call y'all out. Come on, Chess. Come on, Chess. I mean, do y'all want me to call your names or y'all gonna come? Uh-uh, don't run out the back door, ma'am. Kim, you wanna Kim? No, I was telling Kim says I saw Kim come. Come on, Chief Bevers. Come on, Chief Latch. You've been here getting on those years too. Come on. Josh, I see he's over there. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Debbie. As you can see, it's like family. When one leaves, it's not an easy task. <laughs> that brings us to our business agenda. And Debbie, we know you're not going far, so. You're only a phone call away. We can still get you. <laughs> Approval of a memorandum of agreement, MOU, between the City of Goshe and Jackson County for provisions of the recreation services by City Manager Ms. Jansen. Yes, Mayor. Since the 1990s, each city has had an interlocal agreement with Jackson County. Um, basically, the basis of it was for the city to maintain the county-owned parks within their area and in exchange the county would give certain amounts of money to the city. This is the county basically cleaning up those agreements and bringing them more up to date. Um, you've always gotten anywhere from 120, 130, sometimes 140,000. This gives you 150,000, sets forth and anything over maintenance of the parks the county will do. So it's just basically cleaning up and in a local agreement that you've had for a long time. Thank you, Ms. Shancy. Do we have any public comments on business agenda item number one? Do we have a motion by council to approve the memorandum of agreement between the city of Goche and Jackson County for the provisions of recreation services? So move. Motion by Councilman College, a second by so. Councilman George. Any discussion? Starting with Councilman Elvin. No discussion. Councilman Anderson? No discussion. Councilman College? No comments. Councilman Gallat? No comment. Councilman Jackson? No comment. Councilman George? We have a motion by Councilman College, a second by Councilman George. All in favor? Councilman Jackson? Aye. Councilman Gallat? All right. Motion carries. <clears throat> that brings us to business agenda item number two. 
approval of the supplemental agreement number four for the Martin Bluff Roadway Improvements Project by our city manager, Ms. Shancy. Yes, Mayor. This is a supplemental agreement number four. Um, basically, this increases the contract amount by $1,221,986.10, add 65 additional working days to the contract. Um, basically, what this is, is the original contract contemplated 18 inches of excavation. The additional funding and additional traffic control is to excavate anything below the 18 inches, take out the bad dirt, and bring in good dirt if that arises. So that's kind of been approved by MDOT, it's been signed off by the surety, it's been signed off by the contractor, so do the last stop approval. Thank you, um, Ms. Shancy. Do we have any public comments on business agenda item number two? Please come to the podium, state your first and last name. You have three minutes. Councilman College will hold up number one. And when he does, you will then at three minutes, we will tell you to please have your seat. Go ahead. No, he's ready. He already started waiting on you. Anthony Snow, 22405 Highland Drive. My only question, or his two-part question is, with the increase to 442 days now, what is the current working day? That's the first part. And the second part of that is, did the um, number of working days, the count of the working days stop while um, the negotiations was being made? Is that all you have? That's all I have. Okay. We'll answer your question. Um, Ms. Shancy, you want to answer it, or does engineer here want to answer we'll answer your second question was no okay your first question i didn't understand because you asked how many working days and it well, for example june 9th you took your advice and it was 279 at that time i haven't asked for quite a while so now my question is what is the count i'm assuming it's greater than 279 but we have some good days so what is the current count of the um, mm -hmm. working days Yes, and how much more, how many working days are left with this addition? To, we just added a hundred to that. No, no, I'm asking. You what's what's the current count? The, the slow, days the slow. No, to answer your question easily, Anthony, mm -hmm. twelve months. But as you know, M dot days varies. It could fluctuate due to mm -hmm. weather. So roughly, we're looking at a possibility it's going to be twelve months. Well, I mean, he's asking. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a specific number of working days in the contract. Now we know what a working day is. Whether right. whether yeah. they work it up. So we had an initial allocation of working days on the initial contract. The supplemental number three increased that working day count, and this one increases it again. So he's asking, what is the current working day count to this day right here? That's against the contract. That they've already used up. Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. yes. 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 How many have they used but, up? Craig, can you answer that? Um, yeah. It's roughly 12 months. Really? Yeah. Yeah. We have 442 days, as we mentioned, um, on when we quit, or, or as of last Thursday, we had used up 350 days, round number, there's some decimals in there, and I'll get in all that, but 350 days. We've used up a few more since then. They've been out to work for these past couple of days. So we're, we're at approximately 90 working days remaining. Okay. To your point about MDOT days, if you look in the in the project specifications and we use the number of days that are expected month by month, 90 days should get us somewhere into late July. I anticipate that that's going to be a point of discussion with the contractor before we finish the project. But until that time, we're just working under the contract again. I get your question there? That's it. All right. <laughs> we have a question in the back. Come to the podium, state your first and last name. You got three minutes. Um, just for the simple down to earth, what, we, what are we projecting about timeline of finish? I know we're saying. June and then we extend 100 days or so. Is that kind of what you're looking at? That well, the two supplemental agreements extended it total if you add them together by 165 days. Right. right now, 
the days that are remaining on the contract, counting these two supplemental agreements would get you to, or get us to July, and that's considering the perfect scenario. Right. However, it's more than likely going to take longer than that, which means you will we'll have to go back to MDOT and get a supplemental agreement for more days. Okay. But we'll keep our fingers crossed that we're going to have dry weather like we well, did during the summer and they can get it done in the allocated time. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other comments? Do we have a motion by council approval of the supplement agreement number four for the Martin Bluff Roadway Improvements Project STP 9194-00001 LPA backslash 105069-8010000 to increase the contract value add an additional 65 working days. So moved. Motion by councilman um, George, a second by councilman College. Any discussion starting with Councilman Elvin? No discussion. Councilman Anderson? Oh, didn't, didn't this also include some work around the apartments, uh, drainage around the apartments? That's right, the last one you approved. So for increased quantities and the change in the drainage, that was the last, that was not this one, but the one before that. Oh, okay, I, I thought it was rolled up in this one, but it wasn't. Okay. Go ahead. Wait, am I not right? <laughs> the, the last of uh, uh, supplementary number three did include the time for the drainage uh, changes. We included the actual quantities in, in this change. They were pretty minor, but we wanted to, we're doing one, you just kind of want to gather everything while you're doing it. Okay. So the, those are included. Yes. Okay, I understand. All right, thank you. <coughs> Councilman College. <coughs> I'll just be glad to uh, see progress made on this project that's long overdue and thanks to our city manager, our staff, our engineer for finally working this to where we're getting moving along again. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Galat? No comment. Councilman Jackson? No comment. Councilman George? No discussion. I just want to, you know, say the city, you know, we all care about Martin Bluff Road and for people in our community to think other areas are not important for safety I am sort of disheartened but I'm here to tell you that we are going to move Goche forward in a positive light in a positive manner and it will get done it might not get done when we all want it done because if we could all have done it or any of our city staff we would already be out there trying to get it done ourselves with the help of the contractor and the engineer and whoever else we might need. So we are dedicated, we're eager to see it, and I want to let everybody know the contractor cannot and does not want this project more completed than anybody else than us. He is committed to get it done in a fast and timely manner, but also remember, you have hiccups, you have engineering flaws, but he has brick and mortar in this city, just like you homeowners have brick and mortar in this city. And he's not from another city doing business here. And he is committed to getting the project completed and also staying in business. I repeat also staying in business. We have a motion by Councilman George, a second by Councilman College, all in favor. And I echo, as I said earlier, closer to 12 months. I'm not putting my, my name to six months in July. Um, Councilman George, I mean, Goliath. Aye. Councilman Jackson. Aye. Thank you. And our press release said closer to 12 months. That brings us to business agenda item number three. Consider a request for a variance to the square footage of a accessory structure in a C3 <laughs> Highway Commercial Zoning District located at 409 Highway 90, GPC number 23-24-VAR by Planning Director, Mr. Scott Anderson. The Planning Department has received this request from Bobby Nicole Seal, doing business as Riverside Auto Sale. For a variance to the square footage requirement of an accessory structure in a C3 Highway Commercial District, the application fee of $175 is paid 
October 17, 2023, all public notice requirements have been met. So some background on this property. They, they have a, an 1,800 square foot building that they use for their primary use, principal use. They're asking to build a 4,800 square foot accessory structure. The ordinance requirements for an accessory structure is that it shall be subordinate in area, extend the purpose to the principal use. So if you do the math on that, they're asking for an 1,800 square foot variance. I'm sorry, they're asking for a 3,000 square foot variance. Because the primary use is 1,800 and they're asking for 4,800. So I've included the definition of variance in the packet and the UDO, the UDO definition of hardship for your review. Also included the criteria for approval from 4.18.4, which may consider those criteria for making your decision. The rec uh, recommendation of the Planning Commission is the City Council approve the variance as presented with the stipulation that the buildings are removed within 90 days after the construction of the new building. So they have some existing small assessment structures on the property. The property owner is um, saying that he's going to remove those buildings with this new building. <coughs> for what they're going to be using for, which is what they use the small buildings for now. So and that being said, the uh, council may approve the variance request to present, approve the variance request for changes, or deny the variance request. And I'll include the next up in the meeting. And Mr. Sills. Thank you. Do we have any public comments on business agenda item number three? We do not. Do we have a motion to accept Commissioner McManus made a motion to recommend to the City Council to approve the variance that was presented with the stipulation that the buildings are removed within 90 days after the construction of the new building, second by Commissioner Ward. Uh, all were um, in favor and they approved the request for a variance to the square footage of an accessory structure in a C3 Highway Commercial Zoning District located at 409 Highway 90, GPC number 2324 VAR. And do we have a motion by council to accept their recommendation? I'll make, so a, motion. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll make a motion we accept Planning Commission's recommendation for approval, including the stipulations, please. Got a motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. A second by Councilman Anderson. Any discussion? Starting with Councilman Elvin. No discussion. Councilman Anderson. Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Seal, do you have a problem with the 90-day removal of the older buildings? Is that good? Not at all. Okay. That's all I got. Councilman College. I want to appreciate or thank the Planning Commission for their due diligence. They asked a lot of good questions reading through these excerpts. Uh, it answers a lot of mind, so it really makes uh, this council when we're reviewing these items a lot easier. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Galat? No comment. Councilman Jackson? No comment. Councilman George? No discussion. I just want to thank our planning commissioners, our city staff for working with the SEALs, and I want to thank um, Josh and Nikki SEAL and their um, lovely children. Um, they're back here to my right. Um, Y'all stand. And I just want to thank them for their investment here. If you don't know where their business is located, it's located on Highway 90 um, as you're headed to the east. Um, right in front of First Baptist Church in Goatshaw Elementary, and they've been there for years, and they continue to be invested in Goche, as you see with this this evening, and they support our youth and our community and other many events. So we're blessed to have you all here in Goche and your investment. We wish you all a Merry Christmas. We have a motion by Councilman George, I mean College, a second by Anderson. All in favor? Councilman Galat. Aye. Councilman Jackson. Aye. Motion carries. I look forward to seeing the new building. That brings us to business agenda item number four. Um, consider a request for a variance to the City of Gautre's Flood Damage Prevention Ordinance for a Mississippi Landmark Historic Structure located at 505 Magnolia Tree Drive. GPC number 23-35-VAR, and by anyone who don't know where that is in the city of Goche, it's Goche Elementary. By our planning director, Mr. Scott Ankerson. Thank you, Mayor. We received, the planning department has received this request from Pasadena Goche School District. This is a variance 
actually to our blood damage prevention and control ordinance. This is not something that comes before y'all often. Actually, this is probably the first one I've been here eight years, and this is the first one I've brought before y'all. Um, takes a very special situation to actually be able to grant this type of area. The applicant would like to renovate the kitchen at the Gosha Elementary School. The kitchen and dining room are the oldest existing building on the campus, which is a Mississippi landmark historic structure. Because the existing structure, structure is designated as a landmark, it cannot be modified or elevated out of the floodplain. So the applicant will need this variance for, from the city and from our city flood damage prevention ordinance in order to make the renovations necessary for them to further use the kitchen facilities on the site. So our flood damage prevention ordinance has a limit for improving structures that are below base flood elevation and pre -war. That's 50%. So they're asking to improve this greater than 50%. That is the variance that they're asking for, just to be you know, clear in some of the situation. So I've included some uh, criteria from our flood uh, damage prevention ordinance for your review. And the Planning Commission recommends the City Council approve this variance as presented due to the unique characteristics presented. The City Council may approve the variance request as presented. Approve the variance request with changes or deny the variance request. Applicant has uh, representation here tonight for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Ryan Christian. Um, that brings us to public comments. Do we have any public comments on business agenda item number three? Mark Olson, 2504 Robert Hiram Drive, Gaucher. It's a unique building, probably the only one in Gaucher that I think should be preserved, so I hope to find a way to do that, because I'm sure eventually it's going to be repurposed into something else. But uh, any idea what the lifespan of the building as a school is? I think the engineering people, the, could y'all answer yeah, that? Mr. Floor, just here. I think he's saying what, how much further his, how the life expectancy, meaning how much, how longer it has, Mr. Booth. Yeah, we have not done that analysis. Um, so. You know, but it's missing landmark structure. So essentially, the school district has to maintain it, continue to maintain it. It can't go anywhere. So <laughs> it's not a clear answer, but we're going to continue to take care of this plan. Thank you. Any other public comments? Do we have a motion by council to reprove the variance? to the city um, of Goche's flood damage preservation ordinance for a Mississippi landmark historic structure located at 505 Magnolia Tree Drive, GPC 2335 VAR. So moved. We have a motion by Councilman Anderson. Do we second. have a second? Second. Councilman College. Any discussion starting with Councilman Alvin? No discussion. Councilman Anderson. I hope the school will be there long after I'm gone. It's been there since before I was here. So. Councilman College. Yeah, definitely uh, unique circumstances here with this building and MDH approving the remodeling and then having the flood zone criteria. But I think we've covered all our bases here. So thank you for your hard work on this, Scott. Thank you, Councilman College. Councilman Galat. No comment. Councilman Jackson. Yes, um, I'm, I'm glad we are um, remodeling everything because this is a school that has history in my family. Um, so I, I look forward to them getting their um, remodeling done. No further comments. Um, thank you, um, Councilman Jackson. Councilman George? Um, you know, Mr. Fuller was my principal when I attended and um, Billy Booth back there. I don't know if anybody else is in the room that was under his administration and then our last year um, when I was there it was under a lady by the name of Joanne Wavra um, that lived in Ocean Springs but they were great educators great principals we were blessed to have them in Goche but Mr. Fuller continues to be a part of our community and about historic preservation and we are because of him 
um, preserving um, the color West Pascola Color Schoolhouse at the entrance to City Park as we get funding, we move further along <coughs> with that project. Um, and that was due to his initiative to get it put on the, one of the most endangered um, historic buildings in the state. So kudos to Mr. Fuller, kudos to the school district, and um, Mr. Olson, as they stated, it is on the historic um, list. So there are strict guidelines that you have to do to maintain that building. So um, hopefully it will be here for many more generations. And thank you, Mr. Booth, um, for recognizing um, the history when it was um, built. We appreciate that too. We have a motion by Councilman Anderson, a second by Councilman College. All in favor? Councilman Gallant? Aye. Councilman Jackson? Aye. Motion carries. That brings us to business agenda item number five. Consider a variance, uh, request for a variance to a minimum square footage requirements for a dwelling in an AG agriculture zoning district located at Carter Road, GPC number 23-37-VAR by Planning Director, Mr. Scott Ankerson. Thank you, Mayor. Planning Department received this request from Randy Bosar for the 1,005 square foot variance for a dwelling in an ag district. Parcel number is 8529808300. All public notice requirements for that. So some background here. The applicant would like to build a 320 square foot dwelling in an ag agricultural district. The minimum square footage requirement in this district for residential dwelling is 1,325 square feet. So she's proposing to use a high cube 40 foot shipping container as the shell of the structure. I've included the definition of hardship again through the review and the criteria um, for, for the approval of this variance to be considered in the um, development ordinance section 4.104. The planning commission recommends the city council approve the variance request with changes <coughs> that the home meet or exceed the drawings presented. The city council may approve the variance request as presented, approve the variance request with changes, or deny the variance request. And the applicant is here tonight also to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Ankerson. Do we have any um, public comments on business agenda item number five? No. Do we have a motion to? for the variance to the minimum square footage requirements for a dwelling in an AG agriculture zoning district located at Carter Road, GPC number 23-37-VAR. So moved. We have a motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman George. This is, uh, just to clarify, this is with stipulations also. So you're making a motion to approve the report's recommendation. recommendation? Yep. Okay. And that's what you were seconding, Councilman George? Correct. Okay. We have a motion by Councilman College, a second by Councilman George. Um, any discussion? Start with Councilman Nelvin. No discussion. Councilman Anderson? Is the is the builder here? Not this evening. Not this evening. <clears throat> are, are there any plans? To later build a, a bigger home on the property? No, sir, not at this time. Not at this time? Is the property big enough to build a bigger structure home on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And this could maybe turn into a mother in law's cottage or something like that? Possibly, yes. Yeah. Okay. No, no, she just said there wasn't no other home being built. There is not, no plan. No plan for okay. But I asked Scott a question. Okay. Yeah. That's all I got. Councilman College? Based on the drawings in the package here, it's on a fixed foundation. It looks like it's on piers, and it's got a porch coming out projected from it that's actually on foundations and piers, and they got to provide structural drawings on this. Now, I understand, I mean, there was some discussion back and forth, especially during Planning Commission, about whether this fell under a I guess a single-family dwelling versus like something of a manufactured homes. And based on your recommendation, the fixed foundation, it falls more under a single family dwelling. Yes, sir, Councilman. 
I mean, it's kind of open to interpretation. I didn't find that the definition of uh, modular home didn't really fit that. So I, I just threw it in the category that I felt was most fit, which was the same thing as well. And they are adding a lot around the shell of the, you know, the, the storage container. Um, they are only allowed to do this with engineer drawings. So the engineer is basically certifying that this is a single family building in the structure. And this is in an agricultural zoned area, which kind of has a lot of leeway with regards to a lot of manufactured homes, modular homes, and things of this nature. Yes, so looking at like a, uh, like a single wide manufactured home is just slightly a little bit bigger than what this convex box or this, whatever, what the terminology was in here. So, yes, so yeah, so I just want to verify that it is an agricultural area, kind of, you know, it's own little spot. It's a nice piece of property and land that's so, open. So. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Kop Gala. <laughs> Councilman Gala. No comments. No comments okay. At this time. I, my problem is, is this thing is not meeting the minimum standards of the 1,300 square foot throughout the city. My concern would be if we allow this to be out there and what's going to happen in uh, next door to somebody in a subdivision wants to build one of these put one in i i have a concern with that a serious concern with allowing this to happen anywhere in the city thank you councilman Colon. councilman um jackson no comment. Councilman George. Um, I'm going to have to say I agree with <clears throat> Gordon with going below the minimum square footage requirement. Um, the build of the home is not a concern of mine because a Connex box is a very uh, strong structure. I mean, it could be stronger than a framed home, but um, it's going below the square footage that's an issue for me. Thank you, Councilman George. Um, I just want to echo what Councilman um, Galat said and also um, Councilman Drax, um, George, you know, I think it is a great um, rendering. I think it's a secured structure um, and I think, uh, can, you know, we're not talking about the um, type of structure here. We're talking about square footage is all we're um, voting on here. And I think it sets a precedence in our city when you cannot go to a sister city and get um, that low of square footage. And after we had people rebuilding after Katrina, um, they were not allowed to even do 320 square foot. So I feel like they were not allowed and then we have a minimum square footage. Um, many years ago when I was on the council, I suggested us going back to the county's recommendation of 850 or 800. What was it, Scott? I, 800. Um, and people, we did, I did not, we didn't have the support um, to go that low at that time. Um, if it was a little closer to the, um, the 13, um, 25, I could see maybe allowing something a little over 800 because we do have homes in our area that were built here that we have provided variances for that are under our square footage to have their power turned on. Um, and I would be willing, I just feel like 300 is setting a precedence with What's the difference between, and I understand it's an ag use, but RE use is almost, in a way, um, it's got a lot of land around an RE setting. So I feel like, I don't want somebody feeling like we're not supportive of the type of structure you're trying to build. The issue is the square footage requirements, and um, that's what we're here for. I just, um, I have a lot of concern like the ones we've heard earlier, so. Mayor, may I ask you, Scott, one more question? Go ahead. Uh, under action taken, Scott, uh, one of the chairman of the 
Planning Commission made a motion to recommend that the City Council approve the variance request with changes that the home meet or exceed the drawings as presented. What changes is she talking about there? Um, not changes. They were, what they were asking in that meeting was that this structure meets exactly what the drawings presented were, like uh, aesthetically, is what they were asking. Uh, you know, that, the drawings show a porch and sat on the front. And okay, okay. Ex meet or exceed the drawings that were presented. Yes, okay, those changes were in, in that. They didn't okay. want to just uh, allow just a, a concrete block to be placed on a slab and then call that the, the structure. Yeah. I think that they were concerned. Okay, I understand. That's all. Can I, can I make one other comment? Yeah. I understand that <clears throat> Councilman Glides and George's and yours concerns, this is kind of a a new area of build that the city is seeing. I mean, we went through a similar situation with uh, Mima Cottages after the storm that was designated more towards a manufacturer. Well, actually, no, it's its own designation, Katrina Cottage. And some of those are not much bigger than these, and they're allowed in AGs with conditional uses. Uh, they're allowed in R3 zoned areas. So, I mean, this is something new. I don't think we should be scared of something new, but I think we definitely need to investigate our UDO as far as this upcoming usage that's becoming more prevalent. Uh, for instance, I mean, I think Foley, Alabama has a, a whole business district with these type structures assembled on top of each other and around there. So uh, that was my additional two cents in rebuttal to what y'all were commenting on. Okay, thank you. I didn't know um, Councilman Couch were having rebuttals, but <laughs> we, um, if that's what we're having, it, it's once again, it's not the type of structure here we're voting on. We are voting, and I'm 100%, and I will tell you, I have recruited um, and been working to recruit urban development with container parks. Um, me and Ms. Shancy both have spoken to people about container parks. Um, and as Mr. Ankerson told the Planning Commission, um, if this was the, a container is able, that's not the issue here. That could be built anywhere in this city of Goche right now if it met the um, square footage requirements. It could be built today. It's the square footage requirements, and I do agree with Councilman College. We do need to revisit the UDO. And once again, I would prepare us bring in our minimum square footage back down to meet the, our counties at 800 square feet and if we want to go lower to three um, something for all over the city i would be glad um, that we look at that at that time um, we have a motion by councilman college a second by councilman george all in favor all opposed Councilman Gallat. Councilman Gallat. Opposed. Councilman Jackson. Abstained. You're abstained? Yeah, I'm abstained. Okay. So motion fail. That brings us to business agenda item number six, consideration for a property owner initiated rezoning of property from R2 high density multifamily residential to AG agriculture located at Seabird Road, GPC number 23-36-RZ by planning director Scott Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. Planning department has received this request from Box County Boards for this rezoning property known as Seabird Road. The application fee is $300 was paid on October 19, 2023 and all public members of the property have been met. This, uh, some background on this property, of course, is located in Ward 1. The current zoning is R2, which is multi-family residential. The existing land use is vacant. The future land use designation is mixed use residential and surrounding zoning is ag to the north, south, and west, and industrial also. <coughs> so I've concluded the review criteria for council um, consideration, which is 
as you see one and two, either there was a mistake in the original zoning or the character of the surrounding area has changed to such an extent as to justify rezoning and there's a public need for additional property to be zoned according to the request. The Planning Commission recommends the City Council approve the rezoning based on the evidence presented meeting the criteria. The City Council may approve to, to rezone the subject area from R2 high density multi residential to ag agricultural for denied rezoning. I'll include the excerpt from the GPC meeting and the complete packet to be reviewed in the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Ankerson, and thank you, Ms. Montgomery. <laughs> do, we, do we have any public comments on business agenda item number six? About the freezes out of here? Normally it's warm up in here, but oh, tonight, I don't know what happened, but <laughs> sorry. I think somebody bumped it down when they were leaving because it wasn't there. Okay. Um, so, we, any public comments on business agenda item number six? None. <coughs> that brings us to we have a motion to accept the Planning Commission's um, recommendation that they um, approve the rezoning based on the evidence presented meets the criteria. So moved. M motion by Councilman College. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Anderson. Any discussion starting with Councilman Elvin? No discussion. Councilman Anderson? No discussion. Councilman College? I can't for the life of me recall why Council would make this an R2 during the rezoning area, but that's all I got. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Um, Councilman Galat? No comment. Councilman Jackson? No comment. Councilman George. Discussion. And I agree with Councilman College. I just can't for the life of me to see how it got R2 when it's agricultural use all the way around it. Um, and that would be a case of spot zoning. And if you look at it, if we're, we were to ask our attorney, he probably would tell us that. Um, so we have a um, motion by Councilman College, a second by Councilman Anderson. All in favor? Councilman Galat? Aye. Councilman Jackson? Aye. Motion carries. Council. Good. And now, Ms. College, will you tap the door and let Mr. Danoff say? Oh, you did? Oh, thank you, Chief Latch. Thank you, Ms. College. That brings us to business agenda item number seven, approval of the docket of claims. Um, they've been presented and provided to us by um, our city clerk and her department. They've been online so all the residents can see them. Um, so that is our staff presentation. <laughs> Do y'all have any comments on business agenda item number seven? No. Do we have a motion from council? Make a motion we approve the docket of claims provided that all entries thereon are true, correct, properly entered, and not fraudulent. We have a motion by council and college. Do we have a second? Second. Second by <coughs> Councilman Anderson. And any discussion starting with Councilman Elvin? No discussion. Councilman Anderson? No discussion. Councilman College? No comment. Councilman Galat? No comment. Councilman Jackson? No comment. Councilman George? No, no. All in favor? Councilman Jackson? Aye. Councilman George? Um, Galat? Aye. Motion carries. That brings us to our consent agenda. The consent agenda are approved in one motion unless any council members want to remove any. Um, one, approval of the minutes from regular council meeting held December 5th, 2023. Two, receive November 2023 privilege license reports. Three, resolution directing the placement of liens on properties located in Goche, Mississippi for fees and charges incurred by the city of Goche for to abate the unsafe conditions of vacant structures pursuant to the Mississippi Code Section 21-19-11. Four, approval of the agreement between the City of Goche and the Unfazed Show and Ban for the 2024 Mardi Gras tailgate event. And five, approval of a business services agreement with Sparklight for Wi-Fi and Internet services to the Sound Amphitheater. Anybody want to pull one? 
If not, do we have a motion by council to approve consent agenda items? 135 as presented. So, so moved. motion by Councilman College, a second by Councilman George. <coughs> All in favor? Councilman Goliath? Aye. Councilman Jackson? Aye. Motion carries. That brings us to our study agenda. Um, the first is the citizen comments. You have three minutes. Come to the podium, state your first name, last name and address, and Councilman College will hold up a number one um, when it gets close to your time. We go down the list. First up is Mr. Anthony Snow. Oh, I forgot to say, Anthony Snow, 2205 Highland Drive. Um, the first thing, I, I've given everybody the most recent um, statuses of the lights that I did. Um, the last time I could make a report was I, actually December 18th of last year. Today's the 19th, um, so everybody has a copy of the lights there. I would like for Ramona, after I finish, to give an update so it's all on public record. She already gave me an update this morning earlier today. Um, the second thing is the hydrant status. Um, about the hydrants that I got hit like a year ago and then another one four months ago. I like to know the statuses of replacing those because I'm afraid that at some point that the hydrant might, the hydrant is going to be needed to be used and obviously the hydrant's not there right now. Two of them. Um, and the last one is can somebody give me an update on this funding, the sidewalk funding for from Valleywood to Highway 9. Thank you. Thank you. Ramona, the update you provided on the lighting, um, can you, because you did a reporting of this a few council meetings ago, but. Um, and at one point we did have all the lights on. We, we ha now we are missing bulbs again that have gone out. We, they're under warranty. We take them to Chancellor Electric and they send them off to Topaz. They're the company that makes them. Once they look at the PO or the invoice from the time that we bought them and the actual bulb, then Topaz will set ship replacements to, to Chancellor Electric <coughs> and then we can go and get them. So we are waiting on the bulbs at this point. They've all been taken over to, to them. Mr. Billy said that he had sent them to Topaz and so now we're waiting for Topaz to send us the new bulbs. And we do have some new poles that are up and they have they have bulbs in them. One of the new poles, after uh, they put the bulb in, it blew. And Howard's working on getting that prepared. Thank you, Ms. Morgan, for that update. And we do business with them too at the law firm. And we had to wait just like the city does, unfortunately. But they're under warranty and they don't cost us more money. That brings us to the second question, hydrants. Um, I think I can answer the hydrant question. I'll give it a stab and y'all can um, update me if I'm incorrect because they gave an update of the hydrant status, Mr. Snow at a previous board meeting um, a few meetings ago. Um, our past service provider had parts on order, couldn't order some parts. Um, back ordered is what they told the city administration and the city administration got with our new service provider, H2O, who has been doing a fabulous job in the city of Goche responding and they were going to get with our public works director and our fire chief and see if there was other means to parts we could order or retrofit and councilman college suggested some of that and we are working to get that completed. That's the update, correct, Ms. Right, Morgan? The one on Martin Bluff has been repaired and is back up there. The one um, just before you get on that Hickory Hill Drive right there, that one has been repaired. <coughs> working. Okay. So, Mr. Um, Snow, that answers your question. One's up and working, they're working on the other one. Thank you. Um, the third, the update on the funding of Valleywood. We just voted on something not long ago on this project. Um, it's 
it was slighted for some this year or next year, and we did a request to activate that funding because it's slighted for that year, is what I think. Right. So, Mr. Snow, basically it was to activate funding sources for the project. We voted to accept some and ask for some additional funding, correct? Wasn't that what that was for machine C, Ms. Sosher? I don't think it was on GRPC. It's through GRPC. PC. So when you get GRPC funds, they slate those projects for certain years. And I think it's upcoming to be slated within that year. So we're requesting that it be activated. And my, what I think that means is we're ready to go ahead. Yes. That was so my that understanding. No that. And we're ready. So the funding is the funding's there. The funding was there. Okay. And it's a GRPC project. And we voted to activate it at several board meetings ago. I don't remember off the top of my head which one, but we have voted on it. That project was voted on in a board meeting. That answers those. Next, Mr. Claude Stubbs. And happy belated birthday, Mr. Stubbs. Claude Stubbs, 2501 Bayou Bend Road. Uh, I have a couple of different things. Number one was uh, I have electronic equipment that's on uh, monitors, or I have a couple of old box size TVs that I want to get rid of. How can I go about disposing of those? Number one. Number two is where we come out of Bayou Bend Road, coming around Martin Bluff, need to get that cut back a little bit. And also, a little further up the road from the substation, there's a sign that says there's a neighborhood. Could we put something on that? Because numerous times people stay in that right lane, and if you're coming out of Bayou Bend Road, you can get your off. So, uh, slow the speed down or put a sign up or something with flashing lights or whatever, because that's really a danger coming out of there. And it's even worse. I have a trailer, and I'm pulling a trailer, and people come around here and tear the trailer, the car, everything up. So can we do something to try to rectify that situation? Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stubbs. The um, first answer to your question, the electronics, we do partner with Jackson County. Um, for hazardous waste day and they normally do that around Earth Day and the city manager currently has been in contact with them um, to still be a partner for that event. So when they set a date, um, we will announce it and all that. So that's the date that would be available. Um, two, we will request the city manager to get with the public um, works director and service provider to cut back those limbs. And they are new, um, as I stated, but they're doing a great job. So once they learn all what we have normally requested before, I know they'll be diligent um, to monitor that. So um, that's just in between the substation and the um, Bayou Bend. Three, if we could look at some signage, I know we have the mirror and we have some uh, small Sign. One, small, one small, but maybe if we got something a little larger, a little further north, um, maybe that would do good if we could look into that with um, Ms. Shancy, with you and your staff. Um, that brings us to Brenda, Miss Brenda Tiva. I thought that was you, but you, I was, I know, I was make. I couldn't read your right and I just didn't want to call you the, um, come on. She, she wants to go ahead and my Okay, so we're going to let Terry Potts, you're going to, you're, are you going to speak after her or you yeah, don't want to speak know. after her? Okay, so we're going to move next on the list to Terry Potts, um, Ms. Potts. Terry Potts, 1612 Kingfisher Drive. And I'm here to speak about uh, at and laying the cables in our yard without our permission, um, giving us phone numbers to call to complain about that do not work, we're not getting no feedback. 
Um, I called City Hall today. They transferred me to code enforcement. They transferred me to utilities. Then I later on called City Hall again. They told me about this meeting tonight. Now, I, we as citizens pay our taxes. We as citizens have a right to know who coming in our yard to do what. I feel like they should ask for permission. They tell us about this easement that the city have, that me, Brun, where is it? How far it is? Give us some paperwork. Tell us where to go. But to just come in, giving us false information, doing the work without our permission, is very unacceptable. It, it really is disrespectful too. I asked the guys to leave my yard yesterday. I came home at night. They waited. Matter of fact, other uh, neighbors say, no, don't, get, don't come in our yard. They did not go in the yard. They waited till most of us that go to work, they went in our yard. When I told them to leave my yard last night, they got their equipment, they left. Come, they come back after I went to work today, and they finished putting up this tower mm -hmm. in my yard. So, me as a citizen, I need to know what to do. I need to know who I need to talk to, not, not pay phone numbers. Okay. Go ahead. You finish and I'm going to answer you, Ms. Potts. Give you. us the information we need to get in the, uh, contact with the proper people so we can understand what's going on. Not just come in our yard, dig it up. I, hey, I'm a flower girl. This young lady, he'll just remove trees, just grow back her grass. You come to dig it up in the wintertime. This is unacceptable. We work too hard. If the city owns this much of our property, and we know this, we know not to put nothing there. Fence, flowers, whatever. Is that all? That's it. Okay. So, we can answer, um, and if it's the same subject, maybe we'll answer it and Ms. Brenda might not have to say something unless she just wants. But um, unfortunately, I have to apologize. You know, there's two things here going on. And unfortunately, we've had this happen in other neighborhoods in the city, and it's not nice. And no, you're right. I'll tell you, AT&T is not a good community partner. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, they come on private property or, but we might not have an easement, but the utility and power company might have an easement in your subdivision. You would have to look at your plat to see that. Um, some of them are so old, they were developed in the county and we might not have them, but you know, planning does. But if you call the planning department, AT&T, their contractors have to pull permits. If they've not pulled a permit, they cannot be working and we can shut them down. Um, we will let Ms. Yancey um, respond on behalf of the city staff on who to contact in the city that works for her. Um, but we're here to help you. And unfortunately, um, we might not be able to tell you the exact lines. You might have to look at your deed with your survey that should be attached to whoever. If you come to our office, Ms. Terry DeMar, call me and your client will help you. She Go. called and spoke with Ms. Ramona today, who said that she would look into it once somebody did it on campus. And Ramona did look into it. It took her all day, so we had to go pull the plat ourselves. You want to well, we respond? Pulled, yes, ma'am. We pulled the plat, and they did pull a permit for this work. But when we pulled the plat, I discovered that there is a five foot easement out front. So from the edge of the road, five feet in, is a city easement where our water and sewer line lost. Now in the rear of your house, from the back of your house to where the, uh, the house on the other side of the street backs up to yours, they have a 20 foot, it's a drainage and utility easement. And I guess it's difficult for them to get back there, so they went to the front easement and they should not have been more than five feet into your property. Mm -hmm. now, yes, ma'am. And I have called Mark Sullivan. He's the head engineer for AT&T over this area. 
and inform to them of what I found on the plat when I, when I had a school today. And he was supposed to go and instruct everybody to move it back to the five feet. And after speaking with Ms. Nancy today, if they happen to hit any of our water and sewer lines, we will be able to shut them down for working so close. They have. Them. They have. They both have. They have. How many lines have they? I saw a more than five I saw one. And they are. I will continue to speak with Mark Sullivan, is his name, and get as many answers as I can for your questions. But they're supposed to now move back. And he also assured me that before they're completely finished, they have to put it back to as good as it was before or better to, to cover their work. And they said they don't do it immediately. They come in phases, but that they would come back and put your yard back together. Uh, I'll be happy to discuss it further with you and, and get specific questions to answer for you through Mr. Sullivan. Okay, and are you going to be, Ramona, you're going to be the point, Ms. Shancy, Ms. Morgan's going to be the point of contact, or your office, or planning department office? Who's going to be responsible? Ramona will be the point of contact. Okay. Our water lines in that five foot is me support. Okay. Shut them down. And if Miss Miss Morgan will relay to them that tell them to review our meeting. Right. Okay. Yes, and they don't want to hear from Mr. Danos. Yes, sir. Okay. And because he Morgan, will send a letter if he needs to. And Miss Morgan, if you can, if they're actually putting junction box towers uh -huh. along these lines. Make darn sure they're doing it at property lines and not in the middle of somebody's front yard. Well, and well, and then that brings me to question: they're putting them in their front yards and not the backyards. Yes. No, that don't even meet our unified development ordinance. Miss Shancy, can you require a meeting with them and Mr. Danos and Miss Morgan? Well, I mean, we have That's ADT towers. They're usually towers in there, but they put them at the property lines for where the utility poles are. Yes, they put them on the five feet off that road. They have put it in your yard when it shouldn't be there. And that's not acceptable. Right. But even if it's within that five foot, it's but, in the middle of the yard. It needs to be at the property line between two properties. Yeah. What I hear but, from her, they're way more than five feet. But what I hear, hold on, hold on, let me, hold on. Miss, what I heard from Miss Morgan, the front easement was for water and sewer only, correct? It doesn't state it, it just says five foot easement. I believe it to be just our water and sewer. Okay, Mr. Ms. Shancy, Mr. Danos, can y'all look at that? If that's the case, AT&T don't need to be nowhere near our water and sewer, number one. We already know this, it happened in De La Forest, it happened in College Park. Westgate. And Westgate. Secondly, put it in the back so the residents don't have to look at the ugly I stuff, can. nor us have to worry about it when we have a water line issue and then at and T's the world's worst about coming to repair something and if we damage something working on our lines mm -hmm. it's not acceptable so let's just go ahead and nip it in the bud and let's address it with them happy um welcome to the end of 2023 with at and t <laughs> um if you have them as service providers call and tell them what you think Miss Brenda, do you want to still come in? Yes. Okay, come here and state your first and last name and address. Uh, I'm Brenda T. Bay, 1609 Kingfisher. And I want to know uh, that this won't happen again. I mean, or, or if it does, that we should be notified. And like AT&T, they've got a number you can call, but nobody answers. Nobody answers that number. Well, what I can tell you, Unfortunately, AT&T thinks they rule the world. Oh, I know. Okay, because they're corporate America. Unfortunately, we do have a little bit of protection if your plat has some protection in it. So hopefully, Ms. Jan between Ms. Shancy, Ms. Morgan, and Mr. Danos having a meeting, looking at everything, we'll be able to tell you more and also, if they're out there working, you'll know what they can and cannot do. And then we can put you in contact with somebody directly to Mr. Sullivan. We'll provide you his office name and number 
a direct line. I came home last night at 7 o'clock. They had all their truck blocks. They were out there still digging, and I couldn't go down the road until they turned off their lights so I could see to get in my driveway. And don't we, to that response to that, don't we have a working time frame, or do we not, Mr. Anderson, Ms. Yancey? On the permit, they permit, there's a, there's a time limit. How late can Do we know happen? what the time is? Are you talking about how late in the day? Uh -huh. How late at night. No. Okay, but they're to disturbing the peace <coughs> thing. Is there not cheap? I <coughs> Okay, let's plead to it. There is some disturbing the peace times that I think are noise ordinance um, after a certain time in there, Mr. Chief Beaver. There's not? No. And well, putting the bright light so you can't see the well, down when the road. Councilman Elbin, didn't, how did we address that when you were the chief with um, <coughs> ceasefire? When they tried to work in the middle of the night and we had to shut them down. Do you remember? As long as they were, they, they were done by a certain time. They weren't out there that late in, in the evening. That one night, it was 11.30, it rattled our, the whole subdivision. Well, I think they agreed at that point with, to shut down because we were getting so many complaints. Okay. Well, let's look into that. If we need to create an ordinance that you can't work after a certain time, so let's look at that. We can be, um, we'll help you. We'll figure out something that they're not going to, okay. Um, Ms. Della Moore. Della Moore, 1920 Westgate Parkway. Russell, you know I'm here looking at you. Merry Christmas to you. I'm looking at you. I'll catch you at Christmas. Now, let me tell you something. You have not got in touch with Ghost Shake Post Department. You got your lawyer over there. Somebody lied on you, said they hacked your page, and you have not proven a thing. And you sit up here every chance you get and just been defiant. I want to know, I ask you this over and over again, why haven't you filed a police report saying that someone hacked your page? It's against the law, and you know it. So, must be lying. If you walk through that in the body, you must be lying. But why don't you just leave? Why, why are, you, are you not holding up for money? You, you need this job that bad? You know, go show over there, you come over there, and they can help you if somebody hack your page. But, like I said, over and over again, you want to file a post report that me? you must be lying. Do, do you need me some money or something? You, you need money? Why you him? Uh, what, what's the problem? You I don't have a problem. And then my, oh, you don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Just. Okay, I'm there. I'm there. Okay. Chief, would it do me any good to file a police report on something like this? Uh, we can do search warrants with Facebook and get more data, possibly. There's no guarantee it was possible. I can I can give you my Facebook files myself. I've already got them, but I already had them looked at. But it won't do me really much good to file a police report or something like this. Uh, that's all I got. Um, Mr. Charles Moore. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Um, I I saw before about the uh, cleaning the drains out. You know, when it rained a couple of days ago, the water was just running across the street. The drain wasn't taking it in. So we got a lot of, I, I walked here every morning, and so a lot of the drain, drains have uh, petroleum. Pine straw and everything in yes. there. Yes, and other stuff in there. So, and, uh, Below me, that whole this thing really needs to be cleared out. I live in 1921. I didn't ask this is back about the fourth time I did that. I talked to Russ about it a long time ago. But if y'all got the best uh, people that working in the city now, they need to come out there and let me show them what they can do. Show me. Thank that's, you. That's all the concrete flume, also, correct? Yeah. Yes. And also, Russ Anderson and my nephew was sitting right there. He's uh, played football with those shape. Congratulations. And let me say this. When you demonize these little kids and talk about them the way you did, 
call them out their name, the N word, that's not acceptable. That, that was them. not me, sir. We are led to them, led to say that. So that's not good, especially my little nephew, 12 years old. That's, that's bad. So really, I'm asking you for the black American benefits step down. And that's all I've got to say. Paula, oh, could we have H2O, those, con in, in Westgate, there's a lot of these concrete ditches to the north that fall into the Sioux Bayou area, into the marsh, and there's one by Mr. Moore's house that I think runs down behind the apartments off the Goat Shape Ankle Road, needs cleaning very bad. It, I don't think they've been cleaned in about four years now. That one, that big ditch behind the apartments and the uh, stuff off the Goshen Bankley Road, I don't know when it was cleaned last. But even the concrete ditches in there, they haven't been cleaned in, in three or four years now. They need, all of them need to be looked at. Appreciate it. Um, Mr. Moore, I think, if I'm not correct, but Ms. Shancy and Ms. Uh, Morgan, I think y'all have that on the a list they have that west cape drainage on a list unfortunately um they are a little behind but they are catching up but we've had some emergencies um that they've had to get on and then also a backlog that they took over that our former service provider was not doing in the last few months of operating so we have people been waiting to tie into our water and sewer to function unfortunately it's caused a delay and a backup um, due to the changeover, but they are dedicated and committed to getting back on track and work to address the work orders as fast as possible. I just wanted to give you an update to let you know they do have it on their radar, um, this pine straw and the drainage. That brings us to Mr. Benny Coleman. <coughs> Benny Coleman, 1412, Route uh, Rusty, I'm here to uh, ask you to resign. Uh, like Mr. Moore said, uh, I kind of, Mr. Moore kind of, well, we kind of fell out of that. I was holding up for you. I asked, uh, gave you the benefit of the doubt until you said that uh, Reverend Boot uh, talked to your family and everybody here knows he didn't do that. And he did what? Target your family. He he uh, said right. something about your family. He, he did in the meeting, sir. And, uh, he said that my, me and my family was going to be that, regretful. That, that, if well, I, I was something. holding up for you until that happened. And uh, you said he did. And I, that no, one, no one else heard that. Uh, it's, in, it's on Facebook and I so, can get it for you. Uh, so I, that's when I said, well, maybe you did. What he's saying, they saying you did. But uh, yeah. I won't say I love you, man. I, I love you, but uh, I just can't uh, support you on that. Um, um, you being a counselor, just like Mr. Moore said, these children are here. We can't let that counsel yes, uh, right. spread it to them that that you allegedly said. So I'm going to ask you to resign. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Billy Booth. Billy Booth, 1405 Hillcrest Street. Good evening. Um, this season, Christmas season, is a time of reflection. And as each of us should reflect, we should reflect upon our blessings, we should reflect upon the true meaning of this season, the time in which we have set aside to commemorate the birth of Jesus. We should also reflect upon ourselves to see how we are pres presently living. Uh, do we love our neighbor in word and in deed? Um, I'd like to also say I'm grateful uh, for what this season represents, I am grateful for each of you, as, as, as many of you state, this staff uh, worked diligently 
and very hard to make this a great place to live, work, and, and play. I thank you so much for that. Um, and although, as, as you probably already know, I have not been contacted by Councilman Anderson, considering the racial Facebook post that was attributed to his Facebook page. I pray God's blessings upon each of you, and I hope you have a great Christmas and enjoy family and friends. Thank you. Mark Olson. In uh, response you to You want to just name an address? Just an answer to uh, Jackson County Seaman Road Landfill will take his electronics for free. Okay. Did you hear that? Mr. Stubbs? Okay. That's good to know. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Olson, for that. Um, Mr. Truitt. Name's Ken Truitt, 5005, your field, Westgate Subdivision, Uh I'd like to piggyback uh, what the guys were saying about the, uh, uh, the ditches. The ditches really need to be cleaned out. And every time it rains, we have flood over there. And y'all talking about uh, by the apartment, that's behind my house, okay? It's between my house and uh, the nursing home. From the dollar store all the way down to the Sioux Valley, the floods down there. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and it, it, it even floods in the front of my house, like a moat around my house. I got a concrete ditch that comes down on the side. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. It's a moat around my house. Okay. Water comes down, uh, yeah. uh, what's that? It comes three different directions. That, what's that road? Really, uh, uh, Heritage. Heritage and runs Heritage, right into that Brigade. ditch. Heritage, Brigade, Deerfield, behind me. And it's going into a ditch, it's already full okay. of water. Yeah. Councilman Anderson, yeah. let's let him say don't, we don't waste his three well, minutes speaking. I know, yeah. I know, but we don't want to waste your three minutes. And picking back these ladies talking about, I have uh, uh, the uh, AT&T box and everything, front yard. Every time it rains, it's flooded. The box is flooded. You know, you don't know whether, uh, uh, I asked them, I, I said, well, I get electrocuted walking out there in the water, you know? Water over the uh, junction box? Oh, no, 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 no. They said, everything's secure, okay? The other thing, I've been there 45 years, okay? And the people that's been there a long time, they have security lights. They pay with the utility bills, okay? Well, we have new people that moved in there and built homes, all right? They don't have security lights, especially on that Westgate Parkway. That's where it has very dark spots. And that uh, city probably needs to come in somewhere on that easement and put a few park, a uh, few, put a few park, a uh, few lights, city lights going down the middle of that and that might alleviate the uh, running over uh, mailboxes and, and hitting in bushes and cars turning over, uh, uh, hitting the uh, West Gate and the Holler, Oak Holler signs. It's a security deal. Okay? People walking down, we don't have uh, sidewalks, people walking down the street might get run over. You know? So uh, we need some, uh, some work done in West Gate. Thank you, Mr. Tree. That brings us to council comments. We start with um, second meeting of the month. We start with Councilman Melvin. Just like to thank, as always, the employees and the, the, the different departments. Uh, you guys are the backbone of the city. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, also, our ATO Solutions the contractor, thank you for the work you've done this far. I wish Pro is not here, but I'd like to thank them for the work they're doing. Uh, for the people that are looking for something to do on New Year's Eve, Hickory Hills Country Club has a uh, New Year's Eve party that you're welcome to come to. And it starts at 8 o'clock. It ends at 2 o'clock in the morning. And uh, just want to wish everybody 
here and in the city a uh, Merry Christmas and a very blessed 2024. So, Councilman Anderson. Uh, definitely in agreement with Councilman Elvin and I uh, just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and God bless everyone and a special Merry Christmas to a special group of you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman College. Uh, not to sound like a broken record, but uh, <clears throat> Merry Christmas, everybody, and have a Happy New Year. Thank you to everybody that is beneficial towards the city, helps the city, the residents that are involved with this city, the volunteers, and for our youth, just everybody. Just thank you and thank you. Thank you, Councilman College. Councilman Gallat. Very short. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. <laughs> um, Councilman, thank you, Councilman Gillette. Councilman Jackson. Uh, yes, I just want to wish everybody happy holidays. And uh, Miss Delamore, it is good to hear your beautiful voice in the building again. Sorry I couldn't be there. Um, and uh, thanks to all the supporters that are coming to the city council meeting. And that, that'll be all. Thank you, Councilman Jackson, and safe travels home um, from work. Um, Councilman George. Uh, 2023 has been a challenging year in many aspects, um, but I think the staff and the team that we have here, we've accomplished a lot. Um, looking back over the years since I started this, um, it, it seems to get more challenging, but it also seems to get more rewarding. Um, we've got a lot larger project projects that are coming to fruition. We've got uh, a lot of deals we're making, a lot of money coming in from federal and state level. We still have Paula on board, although some days I wonder, because <laughs> it gets rough. Uh, you know, there's a lot to look back on, but there's a lot to look forward to, a lot of positivity. I think 2024 is going to be an exceptional year for Gaucher. And I mean, we're starting out the first quarter with a new amphitheater. And I don't think it's resonated with a lot of citizens or really the coast in general, just what that means for us. We go to live music concerts all over the country. My wife and I do. We go to local towns. We go far off to Denver, Colorado, New York City, wherever. And it don't matter how small the town is or how little the town has, but those amphitheaters grow everything. It's like an Easter egg. You get all this goodness in there. You don't know what it's going to, it's going to surprise you, really. Um, a lot of other developments going to follow through because those people have to have somewhere to shop, they have to have somewhere to eat, they have to have somewhere to stay. You can't put the, course, the, the cart before the horse, but I think this is an excellent project and Paula and staff and council have all worked very diligently with our partners um, to make sure that this is done correctly and it's going to really benefit us. Um, look forward to some announcements at the first part of the year for our lineup, which is something I can't wait to see because I'll be buying all the tickets. Um, but uh, that's just something I'd like to, to really pinpoint there. Uh, now, as far as Paula, we're talking about Christmas and our staff, you know, everybody here is, plays a pivotal role in everything we do. And it's all under the guidance of Miss Paula. And we're very fortunate to have her with us because honestly, if we didn't have her, I, I can't think of one person that could fill those little shoes. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, I've practiced the brain a few times and it, you just, I can't think of anybody uh, who can do it with a smile on her face, no matter how hard the day before or the day it's coming is, um, she gets it done. So while Christmas is not, it's not always Christmas here with the city, you are the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, and we really appreciate you. Uh, so council, you know, as we do every year, we put a little thing together for you. And you don't have to open it right now, but just to show that we appreciate you so much. Thank you. That's all I got. And yes, I have to go after that. So, uh, uh, I, I just, uh, you know. Hey, look, okay, Council it's man. always Casey's show. I keep my mouth shut. You put that That's number right. Out. That's right. That's right. As we heard today, Ms. Yancey got to hear it. The, um, that is what it is, I guess. Maybe they heard it from you, Councilman George. Um, Probably. But, you know, to echo what everybody here who has said, I'm blessed to work with um, leaders who give back to the city, the county, the state, and the federal level. And 
As the year comes to an end, I think how blessed I am and how blessed Goethe is and how blessed our residents, our visitors, our youth. Um, tonight, those young boys, they've been recognized, you can ask Miss Bilbo, they've been recognized many times since the Super Bowl, but they deserve to be recognized many more. Um, and I'm blessed to represent them and go support them throughout the year um, when I'm able. But as Councilman George said, the leader that runs the day-to-day -day operations of the city, Ms. Shancy, every day, I, I think, please, Lord, just we get through another day. Because every day is a challenge. But she's committed to these employees. She's committed to this council. She's committed to the citizens of Goche. She's talented. She could go anywhere in the world and work. Go anywhere in the world and make more money. But she's dedicated to here. And Ms. Shancy, I wish you and your husband Jim and all your children and grandchildren a Merry Christmas. I wish all of our city staff our city attorney, our city judge, all of y'all a Merry Christmas and we are blessed and thankful for each one of you. But please, on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, let's remember the reason for the season, but let's not forget our public safety, our public works that will be on duty on emergencies our healthcare responders that are working. Because without them, we are not safe. So as you all might travel your holiday season, I wish you all a blessed Christmas. And I also wish you safe travels to and back home. I ask you that you continue to pray for our youth as the tragedy still lingers with them. Because the holidays won't be easy for those families and our youth. I also want to thank um, H2O for your new partnership. We are blessed. I can't tell you how blessed. Um, you save on the phone calls from working with our staff, with Sam, Ramona, Nishansi, for getting the word out. Um, it, I cannot even thank you enough. The list goes on. Waste Pro is not here tonight, um, but I thank them, and I feel they need to get recognition. If you didn't see media, and Chief Latch can comment on it, but to fight a fire in any city or in this state and to have people in the home to be rescued is very rare. To have one save is a miracle. To have two saves is a double miracle. And for those firefighters who fought the fire, but they had help by Waste Pro, that is a go trade business that services that city. Those guys helped. They helped the public safety. They notified them when they arrived on the scene and they were there to assist them while they were in there battling that fire. And kudos to those firefighters, kudos to Waste Pro for helping them, kudos to the police department and we pray for those victims in that fire and God bless Moss Point during that time, but we have heroes that help other cities that deserve recognition, and I'm here to recognize them and thank them. We're blessed to have them here in Gotra. I also want to remind you that we will be traveling upcoming in January and ask that you keep us and our state delegation and your thoughts and prayers as we travel to and from Jackson during the legislative session and be with them that they will make great decisions for all of the state of Mississippi. And then also remember, we are gonna be the home of the Songwriters Hall of Fame Museum, and they continue to support Goche, we continue to support them, and they have their last performance of the year, um, December the 21st at 7 p.m., um, Songs and Stories, a live show at the Mary C in Ocean Springs. So if you want to go support your Mississippi songwriters, um, their last um, performance for the year will be December 21st. New Year's Eve, we have a lot of, as you um, heard earlier, um, 
Hickory Hills um, Golf Club um, course will have um, festivities. Also, um, American Legion in the southern part of the city will have festivities, along with some of our other local businesses. But I remind you to be safe and um, call a friend, call a neighbor if you need to. Um, but be safe in whatever you do. And also thank Hickory Hills Golf Course and the Mississippi Heritage Trust this past weekend. They both held events in the city of Goche and Hickory Hills had a neighborhood golf cart parade that was nice and well attended. Myself and Councilman College attended that and I was unable to make it to the um, Heritage Trust down in um, sea Cliff, but um, Walter Anderson parted with the, um, partnered at the Old Fields to host a neighborhood Coco Sunset event down there, and um, that was very nice of them and the neighbors um, that were able to attend uh, joined it. So once again, I wish you all um, a Merry Christmas. Um, you know well holiday wishes with reindeer kisses um and mr wow <laughs> one more time mr coleman yes i'd just like to invite you all to church uh sunday church service we uh, we uh we'll be out i promise you we'll be out Okay. <laughs> okay. And we won't take up the one collection. Okay, and stay, stay true church that you're inviting everybody to? Uh, Hope Community. Hope it's Community. Right by, uh, Country okay. Right that, uh, well, thank you for your invitation. So, once again, um, have a holly jolly Christmas filled with reindeer kisses along with New Year wishes and take your holiday photos at the City of Goche's beautiful landscape and lighting um, that wishes you a Merry Christmas thanks to our Park and Rec Department. Um, we have a motion to adjourn until, oh, Ms. Jancy, you have a comment? Mr. Danos, a comment. Do we have a motion to adjourn until January the 2nd at 6.30? So moved. I have a motion by Councilman George, a second by Councilman College. All in favor? Councilman Jackson? Aye. Councilman Gallat? Aye. Motion carries. <laughs>